welcome back to They Did What, your source for the internet's craziest, most entertaining stories where I go with them, analyze them, and most certainly make fun of them. Today, I'm going to be doing part three to the story I covered last week, which was titled, I dissed my bride on our honeymoon after I saw her cheating. Five months later, she's back and pregnant. As a very, very quick recap, that's about the guy who got married, went off his honeymoon last June. Thought he had a great thing going because he'd known his girl for a very, very long time. She was best friends with his sister, etc. And on the honeymoon, he caught her cheating. You all recall he was out playing golf every day. And she made friends with this gal that worked, I guess, for the hotel, the resort, whatever. Who was inviting her to do things. And next thing you know, she, after a lot of suspicious activity, which you all recall... He woke up one night, found her gone, and she was out there on the beach making out with her and getting frisky. So he got out of there, cut off uh, all communication with her, and she's gone for five months. Five months, she shows up, and she's pregnant. And of course, now it's to work things out. And the guy's like, nope, not happening. But of course, his sister and mother is urging him to let this one-time mistake go, and he says no. And then, lo and behold, you found at the end of the video that his sister was also a giant cheater. Shocker. And we all had a lot of suspicions about his mother. Because uh, his dad was definitely, although probably a good guy, P-whipped. And it was this guy's uncle that uh, introduced him to my channels and everything. So now we're continuing on part three and four to see uh, how things are progressing. Because when he wrote me his story, it was uh, several weeks ago. So now there's been more developments and things like that. And, of course, he responds to a lot of questions in the comment section. So, jumping into it, says, uh, hello, SSM. Oh, and by the way, he wrote this initially for the other channel, but I thought it was so out there that it would be more appropriate for this one. Uh, thank you for reading my story on your They Do What channel, and thank you for your commentary and the comments of your viewers. I learned a lot and have taken a lot of the advice you and your followers provided. So is Alex and my father. Alex is his brother-in-law, or very, very soon-to-be ex-brother-in-law. Especially my father. This is an update of the previous post. People had questions, and some said they wanted an update, so here it is. Remember, guys, you want updates? Request it in the comment section. These guys will more, be more than happy to oblige. I hope you feel it's worthy of sharing it on your channel and with your community. My uncle has been watching your channels for a while now. My father, Alex, and I are relatively new subscribers, but we're all now dedicated watchers. I appreciate your support, guys. Before updating, I'd like to address some of the comments viewers the comments of viewers have made. I was really bashed for playing too much golf on our honeymoon. Well, you were, dude. And this guy will defend it here, but I still stand by what I said. Uh, a couple things. First, after watching the video on the Data What channel, I realized I gave everyone the impression I played golf all day, every day on my honeymoon. I did not. Don't get me wrong. I would have played golf every day, but certainly not all day. Just for about two hours. Make it slightly more with travel time. Our honeymoon was supposed to last two weeks. I left after six full days. I, I want to go through a real quick timeline of those six days. I'm going to fill in some of what I skipped over my original post. After watching the videos, I realized I, sh I should probably fill in the blanks. It's all right. Don't worry about it. Your other, video was your other story was long as hell, so obviously they want to go into much details. But now that guys are aware of your story, they obviously would like to have you fill in the blanks. Uh, Jill and I were married on Saturday, June 3rd, 2023. We arrived on the island in the Caribbean late afternoon the next, the next day. We walked down the beach after dinner that Sunday and discovered about 25 mostly naked people around a bonfire getting high, some just talking, others having SEX. The next morning, our first full day in the Caribbean, we met Jane, an American working at the resort. I played nine holes that afternoon. My tea time was 1 p.m. I was back at the resort by, before 4 p.m. So... I know you said that you played for a couple hours every day. I think on your honeymoon, if you played, say you are there for two weeks. If you did it twice a week, okay. But every day, even for a couple hours, you're married now. And I know you knew her for a long time, but the thing is, is like, you could do all this shit some other time. There's plenty of things to do on a, on a freaking island, you know. And that's where, I know you don't want to hear it, but a lot of people agree with me in the comments. Like, just too much golf, you know. It was a little strange there. And I'm not saying what she, and, and it certainly didn't justify her actions, but anyhow, on Tuesday, I had an early tea time while I was at, the, the, at golf. Jane took Jill shopping. Jill bought an a, almost completely transparent thong bikini to wear on the beach. 
Jane also gave Jill an erotic massage, which resulted in a happy ending. In other words, Jill and Jane had SDX that Tuesday morning for the first time. Jill neglected to tell me about the massage or their happy ending. Well, of course she's not going to tell you. I arrived back at the resort after golf before noon. Jill was wearing the very revealing thong bikini she purchased at the resort. I told her to take it off immediately, and she did. But Jill was anxious and troubled or burdened by something all that afternoon. She was very distressed. I thought she was worried. I was angry about the bikini, but it wasn't me she was worried about. We were on the beach after lunch. Jill was staring off into space. Something was definitely wrong with her. I told Jane I wasn't angry about the bikini she bought. She, she says she knows that. She just wants to get away from the resort. Can we eat dinner someplace else tonight? Maybe explore the island tomorrow. I said, great, and went to the main building to rent a car, and I was walking back to where Jill was on the beach when I saw Jill and Jane talking. I could not hear what they were saying, but Jill was angry, pointing the finger in Jane's face. Jane just stood there listening to Jill. How interesting. Now, I know some of this you guys are aware of, but he's giving more details here, okay? Finally, Jane shrugged, turning and walking away. Jane and I passed each other and both said hi. Jane didn't look happy. Remember, Jill is his now wife. Jane is the lover. I asked Jill what was that all about, and Jill said Jane thinks they're buddies, so Jill and Jane should pal around every minute. Jill was just reminding Jane that Jill is here on her honeymoon and that she is going to pal around with me, her husband, not Jane. Jill and I don't need a third wheel. Jill asked if I was able to get a rental car, and yes, Jill got up from her lounge chair, took my hand, and said, let's shower in the outside shower together and see how much we can mess up the sheets. Good idea. Later, we left the resort to eat dinner. Jill seemed uh, preoccupied and restless. Still distracted, I asked what was wrong. Uh, Jill said she felt like she needed to break, to break loose or break free of something. Okay, on your honeymoon? I asked her break free from what, and she says she doesn't know. When she figures it out, she'll probably get over that feeling. So in other words, this is this is a lot of red flags here. I need to break free. Break free from what? We just got married. If you want to break free, you should have done it before we said, I do. We walked back to the cottage. Jill did not want to walk on the beach. She said she was sick from all these people. She didn't want to be around a bunch of degenerates. Unusual for Jill to say something like that. She's usually very open-minded, much more than I am. Well, we certainly know how open-minded she is, and so and, and her legs are certainly open. Uh, Wednesday, we went for a tropical forest wildlife preserve. You walk on the trails and look at the fauna and the flora. The forest is truly incredible. The tropical birds are incredible. There was a, that was a lot of fun, and Jill seemed to get out of her funk while we walked around. But her funk was back when we got in the car. And Jill didn't want to go back to the resort for lunch, so we went to another resort to eat. The rest of the day, we drove around the island looking at the sights. Jill was still preoccupied, still under some cloud. Yeah, it's called she's been thinking nothing but, about, but Jane the whole time and her her girl-on-girl -girl action. That's what she's thinking about. When we were driving, she just looked out the window, lost in thought. I asked her again what was bothering her. She said, it was nothing. Bullshit, it was nothing. She was just thinking about the rest of our life together. Our life together was so perfect, she was worried something would go wrong. So she has to make everything go wrong. We ate dinner away from the resort again. Jill wanted to walk the beach after dinner. On Thursday, we decided to look at the other resorts and some of the beaches around the island. Jill was still under the same cloud, still preoccupied. She told me she was okay, just overwhelmed by everything. S sort of culture shock. How different our life is compared to people here. Bullshit. She's obsessed with that girl and her girl loving I had a girl I dated back in the day, and when clearly we were about to break up, she was spacing out just like this. And guess what she was thinking about? Some other dude. So that's exactly the behavior here, except in this case, she's thinking about some other chick. She's thinking about boobs. After looking at a couple of the other resorts on the island, we decided to look at a nude beach. I think there are two on the island. We found the one we were closest to. The beach was empty. We walked around the beach. It was very hot. Jill said she wanted to go in the water to cool off. Our bathing suits were in the car. There was no one around, so I told her to go ahead. She said only if I did too. The idea of cooling off while playing in the water and then playing with Jill was very appealing. I took one last look around to make sure we were still alone, but there were now three people walking towards us from the parking lot. It was two guys and a gal, all in their late teens. The girl was between the guys holding both their hands. The guys were wearing bathing suits. The girl was wearing one of those elastic things to keep her ponytail in place. She was wearing only wearing flip-flops. The sand is hot. Jill was standing slightly in front of me and as they approached us. She was transfixed, staring at the trio. 
They passed us, talking and laughing, barely noticing that we were there. But Jill could not take her eyes off the nude girl. Uh-huh. When they passed us, Jill snapped out of her fixation on the girl. She smiled at me, a clearly untroubled smile for the first time in days. She said, let's head back to the resort for lunch. <coughs> she told me she'd raced to the car and took off running towards the parking lot. Jill seemed to have, unre have resolved whatever was troubling her. She was out from underneath her cloud. That was wonderful. No, she saw some naked boobs and some ass and some hoo-ha, and she's all cheered up. I'd tell you everything, my man, but this is the last thing he was thinking about. In the car on the way back to the resort, Jill seemed happy, smiling, but still somewhat anxious. She started chattering away like she does when she's nervous. She kept looking at the speedometer and frowning. I wasn't driving fast enough. After two days of wanting to get away from the resort, she suddenly couldn't wait to get back. Yeah, she wants to go back to her, her little lover, Jane. Jill said I should return the car, and if I wanted to, to go golfing, make a tea time for the next day. Now she's encouraging you to get away and go play golf. She was good, just laying in the sun and relaxing tomorrow. Done with exploring for now. When we arrived at the resort, Jill told me she had to go to the bathroom. Could I drop her off and return the car without her? She got out the front door in the main building, and I went to park the car. I then went to the main building to return the keys to the car rental desk and to book a tea time for tomorrow. Uh, I saw Jill talking to Jean right outside the main building on the beach. Now we know why she was in a giant hurry to get back. <clears throat> I couldn't hear what they were t talking about, but Jill was crying and looked like she was uh, apologizing or explaining something to Jane. Uh, dude, something's clearly going on here. Jane looked like she was trying to comfort Jill. Oh, I'm sure she was. Jane finally took Jill's face in both her hands, wiped the tears from her eyes with her thumbs. Jane said something to Jill, and Jill nodded enthusiastically. Then Jill smiled sheepishly, and Jill and Jane hugged. A long hug. When they broke apart, Jill grabbed Jane's left hand and squeezed it. They were both all smiles now. She turned and waved to Jane, and Jane walked away. Um, dude. Unless this is some serious exaggerating or other things, uh, there's a big issue going on. Given the fact that she probably never behaved like this with another gal, at least to your knowledge. And I suspect that in the other story, there's definitely she's a history of cheating in some capacity here. Along with your sister. When I returned to the cottage, Jill was uh, smiling. I mentioned about her seeing, seeing her with Jane. What was that all about? And she said she, uh, Jane had been a nothing but a friend, and Jill treated her horribly the last time they saw each other, and she felt terrible. They just met a few days ago. It's not like she's a lifelong friend they had an argument with. What a load of crap. Okay, so guys, at this point, we know the story. and He's given more details. I'm going to just jump ahead so we can catch up to where we were. So pretty much he says here, the next Saturday was to repeat the previous day. Jill went sailing. I went to play golf. That night after I went to sleep, Jill went to meet Jane at the bonfire. I woke up. Jill wasn't in bed. I found her at the bonfire. I watched Jill and Jane have SCX a few feet from the bonfire. I went back to the cottage, picked up, and went to the airport. I was home the next day. Okay, y'all remember that part. Now we're getting more details about what was going on. Jill returned from the Caribbean five months later, pregnant with, with what she told me was my baby. I told her we were divorcing. She went to live with my sister and her husband, Alex, and you handled it right. But five months, you didn't hear from her. The only reason she came home was because either Jane kicked her out or she, she needed someone to take care of her because clearly, you know, the baby and all. Uh, reading through the comments, I was struck by how many people believe honeymoons today are like the 1950s rom-com movies. Finally, the couple is married and on their honeymoon, so they make continuous love anywhere and everywhere. Public places, private places, they can't keep their hands off one another. All that pent-up lust finally released. They can't finally get to know each other in an intimate setting. I've known Jill for 20 years. Jill and I have been intimate since high school, over six years. We screw like buddies in high school and when we were together during college breaks. We still had days when we could not get enough of each other. We made love every night, blah, blah, blah. Jill likes sunbathing, blah, blah, blah. She doesn't like golf. I like golf, but don't want to lie on the beach all day. Are we incompatible? Yes, but not because I like golf and Jill doesn't. We're incompatible because Bill, Jill cheated on me. Another thread in the comments was that I served Jill on a silver platter to Jane. I ignored Jill. And Jill got lonely. I pushed Jill into Jane's loving arms so I could play golf. Golf was more important to me than Jill. First, Jill knew I was going to play golf. We picked an island with a golf course for our honeymoon. Second, if Jill didn't like me playing golf, all she had to do was tell me. And uh, Jill knew that's all she had to do. Jill said she wanted to explore the island. 
Well, she explored a whole lot more than the island, my friend. We explored the island. I didn't play golf for those two days because Jill wanted me with her. It was no great sacrifice for me. I wanted to be with her. I didn't have to be with Jill every moment of our honeymoon for her to know I loved her. We did everything together newlyweds do on their honeymoon. Jill just did some stuff no married woman should do on her honeymoon or anyone else. So, okay, fair enough. She, you know, she uh, she claims she was cool with you playing golf all the time. But still, if, for a, a week-long honeymoon, a couple days playing golf, no big deal. And I have a little space. But if it was every day, even if it was a couple hours, even if she's saying she's okay with that, and remember, women will say one thing and mean another, I think that's excessive. Okay? You can play golf another time. I know you disagree with me, but I stand by what I said. And, you know, there are a lot of underlying issues with Jill, regardless if you play golf every day. You know what I mean? She obviously, I, I don't trust her at all. I think she has a history of cheating, you know, because this, this just didn't suddenly, suddenly come out of nowhere, this change in behavior. It doesn't work that way, you know, particularly someone that's in her mid-20s or so and how easily she went into the arms of that chick, you know. But regardless, but, but anyhow, that, that's my opinion about the golf. That's a lot of people's opinion about the golf. And yes, honeymoons are not like the fucking 1950s Hollywood movies and they're making love on the beach with the, the water brushing over them and, you know, everything's magical. And then most times, no. But they are spending time, a lot more time together. Okay, that's, we'll get past this. If Jill really wanted me to, me to go skin diving with her and Jane, I would have gone. I asked how she and Jane, she knew Jane because she wanted to see if she was uneasy about being alone with Jane. So said she wasn't concerned about that. She still liked Jane. Jill went sailing and I went to play golf. People commented that if I had gone with them, I would have been able to prevent Jill from cheating on me with Jane. But Jane, Jill and Jane had already had SEX before they went out to Jane's boat. Jane gave Jill a massage with a happy ending the previous Tuesday morning. This he found out later, obviously. That was SEX. Cheaters cheat. If Jill had not cheated with Jane because I was with Jill every second of her honeymoon, there would have been some time else, some other time. Well, I will agree with that. If she wanted to cheat, she's going to find a way regardless if you were golf or not. She took off in the middle of the night, and that's where you caught her, so exactly. Or maybe there was somebody else already. It's not my job to watch Jill every second to keep her from having SCX with other people. Jill's not having SCX with other people was Jill's job. Jill didn't do her job, and I'm firing her. That's the thing a lot of people don't understand. You can't watch your girl 24-7. Of course not. And there's got to be, you're in a relationship, you got to have some level of trust. But you trust but verify. And nowadays, you have to look for red flags. But you can't watch her all the time, I'm telling you now, guys. So you can't have a relationship without trust. But trust but verify. And if something happens, sadly, it happens. It's just your job as a guy to do your screening process and due diligence on her before she becomes your girlfriend, and certainly if you marry her, to minimize the potential for any bullshit happening. And also then upon things paying attention. But if you do find something going on, you end it immediately. You don't fall for the bullshit tears and the sob stories and drama and all that. But yeah, you can't watch them 24-7. And, and women are really good at covering their tracks a lot of the times. And guys have no idea. Uh, did Jill have contact with my mom or my sister Amy? Talking to Jill on the phone was not getting my mother and sister anywhere in their attempts to convince Jill to come home. So my mother decided to send Amy to the Caribbean in September to talk some sense to Jill. How interesting. She sent Amy, to get your sister, to go get her back. Get her to come home. Amy left her three months Amy left her three month old with Alex and our mother to care for and left for, for the week in paradise. Amy reported that Jill and Jane were living together in Jane's small apartment. Jill told Amy that she loves me, but she isn't ready to return to the US. How is Jill living? Off her savings, apparently. Um, isn't that your savings now that you're you're living together? Huh? Because I'm sure if was, this situation was reversed, she'd think that your money is her money. Uh, Amy told us that she, Jill, and Jane hung out together the week Amy was there. Amy really likes Jane. Oh, I'm sure Amy really likes Jane. She's not, they're all carousel riders. Amy assured me that Jill was not seeing any man, even though they were plenty of opportunities. Like you can believe a word she says. The beach at night is like a drunken college frat party. Amy said after the public hookups, she was most shocked by the nudity. Women didn't wear clothes. Some men didn't wear clothes. Jill and Jane didn't wear clothes either. <clears throat> Unbelievable. Like being on a different planet. Amy was not able to convince Jill to return home. Jill is not ready to return. Amy didn't mention that Jill was pregnant, a detail that would have been hard to explain to me. 
So this whole time, Amy was there and you had no idea. Your mom and your sister are working behind the scenes without telling you. When I left off, when I left, when I left off in the last post, Jill was living with my sister Amy. Amy's husband Alex is living with me. I'm divorcing Jill and Alex is divorcing Amy. Good. Don't deviate from your plan. The prenatal DNA test determined the baby Jill is carrying is mine. And Alex has a baby son and Amy is expecting another child due next June. Well, let's do the math. Due in June and Amy was on that island living it up with Jill and Jane. Hmm, how interesting. Alex told me he won a paternity test for both. Amy has refused to get paternity tests. Well, what does that say? My father has been sleeping in my old bedroom. He and my mother have spent, much la- have spent the last month and a half arguing about whether I should forgive and forget Jill's infidelity and take Jill back. After we found out Amy was unfaithful to Alex in college, their argument has expanded to include whether Alex should forgive and forget and take Amy back. Get the fuck out of here. He found out that she was cheating on him all through college. And, and he's supposed to just let it go and think that she's different, that she's changed. Bullshit. If she truly loved him and wanted to prove that she loved him, she would have showed, done the DNA test on the kids to prove it. She's hiding something. Once a cheater, always a cheater. And she just, she, she's a liar, she's a deceiver, she's a manipulator. You can't, you can't, you're not going to change her. But there's something more going on between my parents. Amy and Jill, my mother, were on one side. Alex, my Uncle Jake, my father, and I were on the other side. First update, no one has changed sides. Regardless of what anyone still thinks or says. I'm still divorcing Jill, and Alex is still divorcing Amy. Both divorces are in process. <clears throat> my father and uncle support our decision. Good. Your dad, in your previous story, was definitely acting like your typical pushover nice guy. But we're working on changing your dad. One, one video at a time here. I didn't talk to Jill at all. I didn't talk to my mother or my sister about Jill. The last time they tried to talk about reconciliation, I told them both that I was willing to listen to them if either one of them could give me a sane explanation of why Jill spent five months with Jane if she loved me so much. Yeah, and they can't give it to you. <clears throat> Jill's cheating on her honeymoon was bad enough, but she was gone for five months. They don't have any explanation. So if they br- bring up Jill, I just say five months. That pretty much ends the conversation about me reconciling with Jill. Well, your mom and sister think that you're pre- that you're like their dad. And with enough browbeating and bugging you, eventually you'll keep. That's their perception of you. Their perception of you is that you, you'll be a pushover like your dad. Clearly, they're wrong about you. And I'm glad. But don't cave. I would have nothing to do with your mom and sister at this point, to be honest with you. Given not just their their major character flaws, but the fact they're choosing her, the cheater who broke your heart and stomped in a million pieces, over you. They're your mother's son and brother. Which makes me wonder, you know. <clears throat> well, I have other questions tucked away here about them. Alex isn't so lucky. Both Alex's parents, along with her mother, Jill and Amy, think he should take Amy back. Shocker. That's one of the reasons Alex is is still living with me and not his parents. They all tell Alex the same nonsense. They weren't married. It was college. People are encouraged to try new things. Yeah, okay, fine. Then then Amy, his wife, and his girlfriend in college could have broken up with him. Said, you know what? The long distance thing is just too hard. Blah, 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 blah. Let's break up. You know, you you don't deserve this and blah, blah, whatever break up with him. Then she can go ride the carousel all she wants. And then later on in time, he can choose whether to take her back. Not pretend that she's all true and blue loving him and loyal to him. Meanwhile, riding the, the, the carousel, Chad and Tyrone and Julio and all the other crazy names out there. No. He went into this marriage thinking she was someone who she presented herself to be and that person is not the person who he, he thought she was. So, on top of all, he has a right to end it with her. And today, Alex is a grown-ass man, and if his parents don't like it, fuck them. They're either on his side or they're not, period. It's time to draw lines and have loyalty. <clears throat> Alex just says he was separated from Amy for as, as long as Amy was separated from him. He remained faithful to Amy, and I believe that. If Amy wanted to experiment with other men, she should have told Alex and not lied to him. what I just say? But Amy knew it would be over with Alex if she was honest with him. So she cheated and lied about it instead of simply refraining, remaining faithful to Alex. An idea that evidently never occurred to Amy. She wanted her cake and eat it too. I know that expression's wrong, but that's that's really the gist of it here. 
Best of both worlds, because she's selfish. And where do you think she learned from? The mother. Alex refused to talk to Amy unless she gets paternity tests for, for his son and the daughter Amy is pregnant with. Amy has refused to get the test. Alex decided that he would take a swab from the boy when he was visiting Alex. But Alex has to talk to Amy to set up the visit. He broke his no-contact vow and called Amy. Alex wanted me to listen in, so I did. Alex thinks there should be a witness to every interaction with our wives. I don't interact with Jill at all. I get updates from my mother about Jill's doctor visits, but I'm there if Alex needs me to listen to him and Amy. That's good, man. Be there for Alex. And if it's legal in your state, because every state's different, record the conversations. <clears throat> uh, Alex told Amy he misses his son and wants to spend time with him. I bet he does miss him. That sucks. Amy said he could come home and spend as much time as he wanted with her son. Amy misses Alex. He says, stop being mad about the distant past and come home. Oh, the hell with her. That she loves him. She should not have been with others. She not, should not have lied to Alex. She understands how much she hurt Alex. No, she doesn't. Unless she went through the same thing <clears throat> that she put Alex through, she doesn't understand, nor does she care. She just doesn't want to get divorced. She was so sorry she went to college. She would have been happy just being with Alex after high school. She doesn't need or want anyone else. All that's in the past. Bullshit. How about her little trip down to the island to visit Jill? They should move on with their lives. They have a baby son and daughter on the way. It's time for Alex to come home so they can resume their life together. I'd be like, kiss my ass. Alex said if, it, if it's way in the past, why not get DNA tests for their son and daughter that Amy's pregnant with? Amy said that's so insulting that Alex can't be serious. Bitch, you should be doing everything I say to try to get back in my good graces. And the fact that you're making a big issue of this says everything I need to know. She's not going to get given to Alex's delusions. They were not married when Alex was in college. She's been completely faithful to Alex since college. Um, given your track record, Amy, uh, no one can believe a damn thing you say. And you can't blame this guy. The children are his. Alex should come home so they can work on their marriage instead of worrying about something as ridiculous as the kid's paternity. Please come home. No, Alex is not coming home. <coughs> they are divorcing. Alex told her every time she refused to get a DNA test, he believes more strongly that Amy has no idea who fathered the kids. And she's afraid of finding out. She's more afraid of Alex finding out. Uh, he doesn't even want to see Amy. He volunteered me to pick up the, pick the boy up. I did, and he got the boy's DNA and sent it to the DNA for analysis. The boy is Alex, Alex's biological son. Nothing illegal about Alex getting the paternity test for his son. He's the father. He didn't need Amy's consent. He, d does, he does for the paternity test. Does for the prenatal test. Okay, so the, the boy is his. So, okay, thank God for that. But regardless, divorce the bitch anyway. Alex wants to test his unborn daughter and doesn't want to wait for a court order. And the court order is less than likely since his son is his. The son could have been the result of Amy slipping around in college, but not the unborn daughter. Wait, I thought the, I thought the test said the son is his. I'm confused. But Alex no longer trusts Amy. Alex really wants to know if the girl Amy is carrying is his. How to get Amy to do a prenatal DNA test. Jill left the DNA, uh, Jill left the DNA results for the child she's carrying with my mother. I picked them up. The DNA tests were done by a reputable company, but I had some questions after your comments and others who watched the uh, the video. I called the company that did the analysis. I identified the test to the woman on the phone and asked if the test could be faked. Unless it is a court-ordered DNA, they said they, they rely on the test donors the test donors to supply the correct information. Yeah, I see a lot of pitfalls in that way of doing things. The prenatal test is the blood test. The blood is normally taken from the mother at a lab or doctor's office, and they send it directly to the testing facility. A pregnant woman's blood has cells from the baby, which carry the baby's <coughs> DNA. <coughs> the test from the mother is very hard to fake. There really, there really is no reason to fake the test if they're checking paternity. Did some other woman I got pregnant impersonate Jill for the sake of the test? Silly, Jill's part isn't faked. My test is another matter. My sister took a swab from my mouth in my parents' living room. The DNA submitted could be from the real father, but they claimed it was my DNA. That sort of switch is not uncommon. The lab is just reporting with uh, that whoever this DNA belongs to, he is or is not the father. If I want to be certain, I should do my own swab and send it. Yes, you should have, my man. 
She could have easily mixed that up. Right there, you see the flaw. They'll compare it to the prenatal DNA results from Jill they have on file. From Jill they have on file. And that's what I did. The DNA I sent matched the DNA Jill or Amy sent in for me. The boy coming in February is my son. Okay. Well, at least, well, this is your son. But now that this is your son, now you have a responsibility. Okay. You don't have to be, you don't have to be, you can divorce Jill or have it annulled because I know it's, it's been five or six months, seven months now, whatever the hell it is. But uh, that child is yours. That child is yours. And it's your job to raise that boy. And by God, you'll raise that boy to be our pill, that's for sure. <clears throat> my father decided that my mother's defense of Jill and Amy's infidelity was so crazy that my mother must be hiding something. Infidelity doesn't seem to matter too much to my mother. She says it's just SEX. Bullshit. She told me both told both me and Alex to just get over it. My father has also watched videos and read comments. And uh, lots of people commented where, sure, my mother was also a cheater. My father is even more convinced that's true after watching the videos. He wants to find out for sure. And he shall. So, guys, I'm going to wrap this up here. Stop screaming at me. And we will be doing part four in a couple hours. I always keep my word. You'll have part four in a couple hours to find out where things progress. I realized the beginning of this video was, it was a recap, but also a little more details he wanted to talk about. This guy's going through hell, so he deserves to be heard. But anyhow, guys, big fucking mess. But to the bro out here, yes, you need to divorce Jill or get it annulled, whatever. You cannot be with her. And I don't care all the, the promising and begging and crying she does. No, you are young. you got your whole life ahead of you. You don't need this shit. And your soon-to-be ex-brother-in-law, Alex, should divorce your sister. And quite frankly, given how they're all behaving, I wouldn't have anything to do with your sister and mother at this point. You can't trust a damn thing they say. And your dad, well... We're going to find out what's going on with him and your mommy dearest soon enough. So, guys, stay tuned for a couple hours, and we'll continue on in our adventure here with our man and his girl on the islands.